Good morning everyone. I just got up, filmed a little body update that you will have seen in my last video where I got super real about my recent weight gain. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But today what I wanted to talk about is the fact that I do still want to lose fat, but because of various other things that have come to light about my body and about my health, I am majorly shifting my strategy to accomplish that. So I wanna talk about like the actual changes I'm making, some of the mindset changes that I've had to kind of go through to adjust to this new strategy and all that. But first, I wanna kick off the day with some yoga. That video was 20 minute morning yoga flow, yoga with Tim. Very good, approve. I told you guys this already like two weeks ago, but I have just been really enjoying yoga lately, which is just so crazy to me because for the longest time it was one of my least favorite forms of exercise. But the more I do it, the better it feels and the better I get at it and it's kind of fun. But now that my morning exercise is out of the way, it is breakfast time and <laughs> I am very sad. Cause I am out of like three or four of the ingredients that I need to make my smoothie bowl. I have the steamed and the frozen veggies ready to go, but I can't make my smoothie bowl. And it's like deathly hot today. So I'm very sad about it. I really need to just like restock on all of the things that I need. But all hope is not lost. I do have another breakfast that I've been liking lately, just not as obsessed, obsessed with as, as the, the smoothie bowl. bowl. So I think I have all the ingredients I need for that. So let's go make some breakfast. Oh, that's attractive. my kombucha. Everyone always asks what my favorite brands of kombucha is. Brew Doctor, one of my favorites. And now my pudding is puddingy, so it's time to eat. Well, I am sad about not having my smoothie bowl. This does always still make me very happy. But speaking of my smoothie bowl, I do need to restock on my smoothie bowl ingredients so that I can indulge and have the deliciousness every single day of my life. So I figured while I eat my breakfast, I'm gonna take you guys online and grocery shopping with me for a socially distant grocery shopping experience. Whenever I restock on my pantry staples, I get it from Thrive Market, an online marketplace with the highest quality, healthy, and sustainable products. They have thousands of wholesome food, home, and beauty products, and everything is super duper discounted compared to regular retail prices in stores. Members save an average of $32 per order, which given the fact that a membership is $5 a month if you do the year-long option, and $10 a month if you just do month to month, you're saving money. Like so much money, even if you buy the membership, if you order like once a month, which I do. So let's do some shopping. For those of you who don't know, Thrive Market also does daily gifts. So today's gift is four free protein bars, which is super awesome. If you're already a member, they do like daily stuff. So make sure you're checking your emails and taking advantage of that because they give some pretty cool stuff away. Oh my God, my computer fan is horrendously loud right now. I apologize, I don't know what's happening. I think my computer is very upset that it's so hot outside. You can even see over here that I have saved over a thousand dollars so far. My projected annual savings is about six hundred dollars. This is why I always make sure to stock up with my pantry staples on Thrive before I go to Whole Foods. So that Whole Foods doesn't take all my money. All right, so I need cacao powder. I'm gonna get the Thrive Market brand because usually the Thrive Market branded stuff is a lot cheaper because they're obviously cutting out the middleman. And then I also need some coconut milk for my smoothie bowl. I am literally so happy that Thrive Market has this. It's so hard to find coconut milk without gums added to it. And this is like one of the like two brands that is like a clean coconut milk. 
and it's so hard to find in stores. Like I have never seen it in a store. I also need some cashew butter. I recently stocked up on almond butter, but it's honestly just not the same. If you have not had cashew butter before, what are you doing with your life? My favorite one is the Artisana Organics. It literally tastes like there's sugar in it, but there's no sugar in it. Like, it's just so good. And I saw it at Whole Foods the other day and almost grabbed it, but it was like 20 bucks. And I was like, <laughs> no. So we're getting it now for $13.50. I also really want some ketchup. Do I want ketchup? Oh my God. Thrive Market ketchup is on sale. Getting one of those. It's like a sale on a sale. It's already all discounted. Now I'm just thinking about sauces. I need some barbecue sauce. I'm gonna go with the Primal Kitchen one. Primal Kitchen is such a great brand. If you're looking for like clean, good for you sauces, highly recommend. I got an email from Thrive Market this morning saying some of my favorites were on sale, including Paleo Puffs. Y'all know how I feel about Paleo Puffs. Oh my God, uh, I wanna buy them all, but I shouldn't. Let's get a bag of no cheese cheesiness, my favorite flavor. Hmm, I know what I need. More of the cinnamon coconut wraps. For sure. That was what I needed. I always scroll through my old purchases to see what I'm forgetting. Bone broth. I'm out of bone broth. Let's get some cuddle and fire bone broth. I've been making a lot more rice and quinoa lately, and I love just cooking that in bone broth. Mmm! We made it to free shipping. Orders over $49 on Thrive Market. Chip for free. Oh! And I have some surprise Thrive Cash. This is, this is a good day. Sometimes products, when you buy them, you get like Thrive Cash, which goes towards your next purchase. I guess I have $6 of Thrive Cash, so very exciting. Saved a total of $30 on all of this stuff. All right, don't mind me. I'm just gonna check out real quick so you can't see my credit card number and home address. Also, last thing that I think is super worth mentioning, they have over 70 different like diet and value filters that you can filter the foods and products through. And they recently added BIPOC owned. So if you wanna support BIPOC owned businesses, you can very easily do so. So if you wanna save on your pantry staples, your favorite home cleaning products, clean beauty products, etc., go to thrivemarket.com slash fit and nerdy. You can pick a membership level that suits your lifestyle, whether it be one month or a 12 month membership. And when you pick a membership, you can get yourself a free gift valued at up to $22. I have a 12 month membership because it comes out to $5 a month and I save so much more than that when I order through Thrive Market. But if you're not sure, wanna give it a try, you can just sign up for a one month membership and it's totally risk free. Like you can get your money back if you hate it. Literally so excited for my cacao powder and coconut milk to get here so that I can make another smoothie bowl. Well, that was a colossally disappointing handstand practice, but just struggling to focus today. I didn't get enough sleep last night. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to quickly touch on how my like fat loss strategies are shifting now that these other things have come to light and I know that there's other stuff going on with my body. If you're not caught up on all the details, basically I had topical steroid withdrawal, it messed up my cortisol, which caused me to gain weight, has also caused me to not get my period back after a little over three months off of hormonal birth control. So in about February, March is when I gained like 11 pounds kind of out of nowhere, which for someone my size is like a pretty significant amount of weight haven't been able to lose it and now that I've realized that like cortisol issues are probably the underlying cause of the weight gain and my inability to lose weight I am shifting my strategy to prioritize health first but with the long-term goal of still losing that fat if I had known at the very beginning like when I gained that weight that I gained it because I had weird cortisol issues going on I probably would not have even tried to lose the fat in the first place. I just thought it kind of came out of nowhere and I was like, okay, I gained fat and I should lose the fat. But because these other things have come to light, it has made me realize that that was probably the cause. And I do think my cortisol is still a little bit out of whack because the last like two weeks, I've been really struggling to fall asleep. Like it feels like it did, not, not nearly as bad, but like when I went through topical steroid withdrawal, I could not fall asleep. And this is like, it's a similar feeling. So my new fat loss strategy is to prioritize health before even thinking about fat loss, now that I know that I have some health issues to work on. I say this all the time, but it's so, so important that if you focus on health, the aesthetics will follow. If you just try to pursue aesthetics and disregard your health, especially if you have underlying health issues, you could completely ruin your health in the process and then you will lose your aesthetic progress too and you'll have nothing. So if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video is that if you have underlying health issues, 
do what you can to treat those first before trying to actively lose fat because it'll make fat loss so much easier and so much more sustainable. Your body's gonna cooperate with you so much more if it's happy. So that said, the main thing that I'm going to be prioritizing now is balancing my cortisol and getting my period back. I've been looking into some various ways to get some lab work done to see where I actually need help the most so that I can create like an actual plan of attack for balancing my hormones because if I don't know what's wrong, then I'm kind of just like shooting in the dark. I found a company called Let's Get Checked that would be a lot cheaper than me trying to go through my doctor, so I might be doing that, but I'll update you guys when I actually like do the tests. But basically, I'm gonna try to get some testing done to get a baseline. And then from there, I will implement strategies to fix whatever the results reveal is specifically wrong. And yes, I will make an entire video about that when I actually have like my step-by-step -step process. But the bigger thing that is at the root cause of everything is the cortisol dysregulation. So I am trying so, so hard to get my sleep back on track. I actually went to bed half an hour earlier last night. I'm very proud of myself. Even though it did take me quite a while to fall asleep and then I randomly woke up an hour and a half early, I tried. Also doing what I can to just decrease my stress in general, outsource more work, try to do a little bit more meditation, a little bit more like mindfulness practice, reminding myself to breathe regularly throughout the day and not just get like caught up in a little stress ball. And then food wise, I am absolutely not actively eating in a deficit. I am 100% eating intuitively right now. I just want to completely rely on my body and have it tell me what it needs. And if that means eating more, I'm gonna eat more. If that means that I'm gonna end up gaining more weight, I'm gonna end up gaining more weight. If that means eating a little bit less, then I'm gonna eat a little bit less. I'm not tracking, so honestly, I don't even know how much I'm eating right now. I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions about like how I'm shifting my focus, so I figured I would just go through some of those. One person said, I'm healing from severe health issues and dealing with amenorrhea too. Hormones and happiness first, yes. Good, love it. I mean, I'm sorry that you're also dealing with this, but good mindset. This is a good question. Basically, how long would this process last? How long do I expect to be doing this? I have literally no idea. What I'm gonna take as a sign to start potentially thinking about losing fat again is once I get my period back and then I'm not gonna actively do anything about it until I know that I have a regular menstrual cycle. If it takes me, a year to get my period back, then we're gonna spend a year trying to get our period back. post amenorrhea does not really have a consistent timeline for people, so I really have no idea. I'm just gonna do as much as I can and hope for the best. Relevant, this person says, just sharing that I'm two and a half years post pill and still working on getting my period back, so. It could take that long. Biggest game changer going from a weight loss mindset to a health slash balanced mindset. First of all, I just want to say that I personally don't think a weight loss mindset is inherently not a balanced mindset. I think you can have a very balanced mindset and still be actively trying to lose weight. I mean, I've always prioritized my health first and the only reason I shifted my focus toward aesthetics was because I believed that my health was in the optimal place. Like I didn't think I had any more health work to do. So I was like, great, now I can think about aesthetics, which I haven't done in like two years. How to know when it's time to switch methods. I thought it was best to give it time to work. Well, I did give it time to work. I gave it about four months to work and my weight did not change. Well, it yo-yoed back and forth, but on average, it did not change. So yeah, I would give it about three months to really be safe. Like depending on what you're trying to accomplish, if you're not seeing any results in three months, you're probably doing something wrong and should reevaluate. Ah, good one. Do you have any tips for wearing tight slash revealing clothing when your body composition is not at its peak? I have personally found that I have been more comfortable, more confident, more happy wearing clothes that fit me really well rather than trying to like squeeze into my clothes that are not fitting as well. When I put on something that used to fit me really great and was super flattering and it just, I can't even put it on anymore, that just makes me kind of feel like If you're struggling to prioritize health and you're just like obsessed with the fact that you don't look the way that you want to, I think one of the most damaging things you can do is try to force yourself back into the box that you used to fit in when instead you need to be working on something else. Ooh, another good question. Would you consider post amenorrhea recovery and weight loss conflicting goals? I would say not necessarily, but in most cases, yes. For amenorrhea that's caused by under eating or overtraining, 100%, but this person specified post pill amenorrhea, so that's not necessarily what's causing it. For someone in my situation where I'm pretty sure cortisol issues are what is causing my post pill amenorrhea, like what's preventing me from getting my period back, I do think weight loss is in conflict with that because it's going to increase cortisol. Like eating in a calorie deficit is a stressor on the body. And so that's not gonna help my cortisol. It's not gonna help me get my period back. But for other people, it could be that like a very unhealthy diet or unhealthy habits are what is preventing you from getting your period back. And so in 
eating healthier and moving more in an effort to lose weight, you might make your body healthier and it might be easier to get your period back. So I think it really depends. Will you continue to intermittent fast while trying to recover? It's something I struggle with. No. So I have been actively trying to make sure I have a snack in the morning, at least within like an hour of waking up. So this morning I didn't have a snack, but I ate breakfast within like an hour and a half of waking up. So that's fine. But yeah, considering the vast amount of anecdote from women whose menstrual cycles have been messed up by intermittent fasting, I am erring on the safe side and not making that a part of my lifestyle right now. All right, those are the best questions. Thank you. To those of you who submitted questions, I hope that answered your questions. If you have more questions, let me know down in the comments below. I will, as always, be bringing you along this journey with me where the current trajectory is health, fat loss, if that makes sense. So just sitting here at my computer debating what food I should order for dinner. Cause I have basically no food at home right now cause I'm about to go visit some family and I don't want to have like a bunch of fresh produce lying around. So I ate it all. So now I have no food. So now I need to get food. This is a very long winded way of saying, I just remember Chipotle exists and I am so getting a burrito bowl tonight. Success, I got my Chipotle. I got a salad with white rice, black beans, chicken, corn, salsa, guacamole, and cheese. I am very, very hungry. I definitely, briefly thought about getting pizza i've been like briefly thinking about getting pizza for the last two weeks but every time i think about it i think about how i'm gonna feel afterwards and i know i'm just not gonna feel optimal and so i just haven't gotten it and i don't feel restricted or anything in any way by purely listening to my body and knowing the fact that i'm not gonna feel optimal for having it and then choosing not to have it but i did get another brownie oh wow the ingredients in these are actually really good i didn't even notice that so i'm definitely gonna be eating this after I finish my Chipotle. But while I eat this, I'm gonna go see if I can convince my roommate to stop watching sports and watch TV or a movie with me. This is poor timing on my part to go get a drink that I would need to show you in my what I eat in a day because I can't really talk because my face is freezing solid. Freezing? Drying. Drying solid. But I just made my classic ginger lemon bubbly mix cup of Half a thumb of ginger, chopped up, steeped in boiling water for, I don't know, it was probably 45 minutes, plus one lemon LaCroix and ice. Literally one of the most refreshing things on the planet and it is hot, so I need one. Just took the mask off so my face is like a wee bit red, but it's very, very smooth and I love it. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit hungry right now, but I'm trying to go to bed in like 30 minutes, so I don't think it's the best idea to eat something. And it's cause I did not eat as much as I normally do today. I just wasn't really hungry throughout the day. And that's just kind of what happens when you eat intuitively sometimes. So it's fine. I would much rather go to sleep in like half an hour and get a nice deep restorative sleep than satisfy the small amount of hunger that I have. Yeah, sleep sounds nice. <sighs> So I think I'm gonna brush my teeth, get ready for bed. End the video here. If you liked the video, please do go to big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you wanna see more content from me all about health and fitness, you can check it out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video and I will see you very soon. Bye.